All right, folks. So today I want to talk about a paper that talks about writing an operating system kernel in a high level language, specifically in Go. The authors are Cutler, Tashook, and Morris from MIT. And this paper was published in the 2018 USNICS operating system design and implementation symposium. The artifact this paper discusses is a kernel called Biscuit, which was written in Go and implements a subset of POSIX. So it is a Unix-like operating system. And the goal of doing this was not really to innovate along architectural lines, but instead to gauge the pros and cons of using a modern high level language for writing an operating system kernel, as opposed to using a language like C. Along the way, they handle some interesting challenges like how to deal with the kernel running out of memory. And of course, they also have some benchmarks which compare the performance of this kernel kernel written in Go with the Linux kernel, which was written in C. Now, there have been other kernels in the past also written in high-level languages. For example, the Lisp machine. There were operating systems like Cafe OS, which were written in Java. And there was a project at Microsoft Research called Singularity, which tried to build an operating system kernel on the .NET virtual machine stack. People have also tried writing operating system kernels in more modern systems languages like D or Rust. But what the authors here are really trying to stress is comparing the experience of writing a kernel in a high level language with that of writing one in C. C is definitely the default and first choice when it comes to writing operating system kernels. Every major kernel in existence today is written in C, whether it's Linux or Mac OS or the Windows kernel. And why is that? A major reason is that C supports low level techniques like manipulating memory and registers, pointer arithmetic, and all this can really help performance. So the bottom line reason that C is so popular for kernels is basically performance. And why would we want to use a high level language other than C to write a kernel? There are several features of modern high level languages that can make it easier to write kernel code, but also to write safer code. We have garbage collection, which eliminates an entire class of bugs such as use after free. We have type safety, which again can eliminate a whole class of bugs like buffer overflow bugs. And we have language support built in for threads and concurrency, which makes it much easier to write concurrent code. Compare this to how hard it is even for expert C programmers to write bug-free C code. Another class of very hard to find and debug bugs is use after free bugs. The authors point out that in a four month period in 2018, the Linux kernel had 36 commits just to fix use after free bugs. And use after free bugs are really hard to find and fix because when multiple threads are accessing a shared resource, it's very hard to reason about when the last thread that was using it has stopped using it. Those are all good reasons to use a safer garbage collected language. But of course, the use of the garbage collector is not free. It comes with some amount of CPU overhead. And the authors try to quantify that later in this paper. The main goal of Biscuit was to evaluate the practicality of writing a kernel in a high level language. As such, the authors used a standard monolithic kernel architecture, and it uses a small amount of assembly to handle the bootloader and the entry and exit point for system calls, and it uses no C. Now, in terms of the overall architecture, the kernel uses a largely unmodified Go runtime with the exception of the shim layer. The shim layer provides the things that the runtime would expect to have when it runs on a regular kernel in user space, which are basically things to handle memory allocation and things to handle concurrency. On top of this runtime, you have the regular 
operating system functionality written in Go code. And then in user space, you have your regular processes. In terms of the user level interface with processes and file systems, Biscuit supports a pretty standard subset of the POSIX interface. So it looks very much like a Unix-like operating system. Now let's look at memory management and garbage collection. Concurrent means that the garbage collector can run concurrently with other threads that the runtime is running. And parallel means that it can execute on multiple cores. Concurrency is a nice feature because it minimizes how long stop the world pauses need to be. These stop the world pauses are typically on the order of tens of microseconds. We should also note that this is not a copying garbage collector. It does not move objects. One very real problem that we have to deal with is the kernel running out of heap space. Before we look at how Biscuit handles heap exhaustion, let's look at how the Linux kernel deals with the same problem. Linux takes an optimistic approach and simply lets system calls proceed without first checking whether they have enough heap to succeed. It lets them go all the way up to the point where an allocation actually fails. Once that happens, it then goes and tries to kill threads that are using too much memory. The problem here is that you risk deadlock because the victims of the killer thread itself might be waiting to get a lock. And then what happens is that you have to undo all the work you did up to the point of failure to go back to a consistent state. And finally, the system call will simply return an error. Biscuit takes a very different approach where at the start of each system call, it waits until it has enough heap space to successfully complete the call. Now you may ask how it computes, how much space it would need for that, and we'll get into those details in a bit. In addition to that, it uses a killer thread which goes and kills processes that are using too much memory. The benefit of doing this is that you get to simply omit a lot of very complicated kernel code that deals with unwinding a failed system call partially executed. Also, applications do not see system call failures. They might have to wait just a little bit if you are close to heap exhaustion, but they will not see a failure. Okay, so let's get back to the question of how Biscuit reserves enough RAM for a system call to succeed upfront. Let's denote by S the amount of simultaneously live data that a system call uses. How should we come up with a bound for S? The approach Biscuit takes is to perform a static analysis over the kernel source code to find out how much RAM a system call would need. This is non-trivial because, for example, it is hard to find out statically when allocated memory is no longer live because of transient users. Also, when dealing with loops, it's hard to statically know the bounds of those loops. So what Biscuit does is examine the call graph to detect all locations where a system call may allocate memory. Go provides several convenient packages which give you access to static representations of your source code that make it easy to perform the static analysis. Now, in cases like loops where we cannot statically know what the bounds are, we fall back on human annotations. In the case of Biscuit, there were 78 loops, which the author of the program had to annotate with bounds. Similarly, there are data structures where you don't know the bounds statically. Again, we fall back on the programmer inserting annotations into the source code to help out the static analyzer. Ultimately, Biscuit ended up with a simpler approach for dealing with heap exhaustion that was enabled by Go's analyzability. Biscuit makes good use of a lot of the high-level features that the Go language provides. The authors compare it with a couple of other very popular Go projects, the Go language itself, as well as Mobi, which is a part of Docker, and they find that Biscuit uses about the same number of Go's high-level features. 
Go routines help with drivers using long running event handlers. And using threads with garbage collection really frees the programmers from a lot of cognitive overhead because they don't have to worry about when shared objects are being used by concurrent threads. So perhaps the biggest gain from doing this is the potential to reduce bugs such as memory corruption and buffer overflows. The authors looked at 65 recent vulnerabilities in Linux and analyzed how many of them would have been avoided by using a high-level language. For 11 out of the 65, they weren't sure. 14 out of the 65 were bugs of logic. but a full 40 out of the 65 bugs would have been prevented by using a high-level language such as Go. These were mostly things like buffer overruns and use after free bugs, which again would not have been possible in Go because it is garbage collected. The authors performed some benchmarks to see how much delay garbage collection imposes, and they ran some benchmarks using Nginx and they found that garbage collection only added, on average, a delay of 1.8 microseconds, where the average request turnaround time was about 45 microseconds. And a very tiny fraction, that's just 0.3% of requests, spent more than 100 microseconds in GC. The authors also performed some benchmarks comparing it with Linux, setting it up in such a way that the code paths were nearly identical. And we see that Linux is about 10% faster. So there definitely is a performance tax to be paid when using a high-level language, but it is not prohibitive. So where does this leave us? Should we be writing kernels in Go or in C? Now for existing kernels like Linux, which already have a huge code base, this probably does not make sense, but this becomes more of a possibility for new kernels or new virtual machine monitors. This experience definitely shows that writing in a high-level language like Go avoids the most common security issues seen with kernels written in C. Also, because of the high-level nature of the language, it's easier to experiment with OS ideas and iterate quickly. However, if CPU performance is the most important factor, then yes, C is faster. So that was a look at Biscuit, which was an OS kernel written completely in Go. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.